In this lesson, we're going to revisit the non-inverting amplifier. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 4, starting on page 23. In our last lesson, we took a look at the operational amplifier and developed a technique called no voltage, no current. Let's apply this to the non-inverting amplifier. If there's feedback from the output to the input and the output's stable, then the voltage across here is driven to zero. So let's apply that to our analysis. There's no current going in or out of the op amp because it's a very high resistance. The feedback is going to allow this to shrink to zero, provided that this is stable. Now in this course, we're going to assume that all circuits are stable, and in fact they will be, and we'll take a look at the stability problem in ECE202. Since there's no current here, the current in this resistor R2 is the same as R1. So we could find the voltage across here in terms of V out. We've got the voltage divider. It may not look like these are in series, but because this is zero current, these are. So the voltage across R1 is just simply V out times R1 over R1 plus R2. Now if you go around the loop this way, the rise in voltage would equal the drops. So V sub S is equal to zero plus V sub N. Now I can substitute that in over here. And so V sub S is equal to V out times R1 over R1 plus R2. So now I can solve for V out, divide by V sub S, take the reciprocal of this, and you end up getting one plus R2 over R1. And notice how much shorter that was from what we did on pages 20 and 21. Basically, we took the limit in the first step instead of the last step. The non-inverting amplifier is a very common building block in building larger electronic circuits. So it might be worthwhile taking this circuit and finding a model for it. Okay, what do we know about the circuit so far? Well, we know that the current coming in here is zero because this is the lead of the plus terminal. I know that the output voltage here is one plus R2 over R1 times V sub S. Last thing I don't really know about is what's gonna happen when I put a load here. In other words, what's the Thevenin in resistance looking back into this circuit? Well, let's find it. Set all the independent sources equal to zero. In this case, shorting this. We could apply a test current and measure the voltage across here. Let's analyze the circuit. Now again, I have feedback around the op amp, so the voltage across here can be driven to zero. Let's assume that that's what's going to happen. Now there's no current coming in here, no current coming out. That's because of the high resistance. And so let's see if we can analyze the circuit. With no voltage here, the voltage across here has to be the same value. In other words, the drop in voltage here would have to equal the rise in voltage here. And so this is also zero. The current coming in here is zero. This current is also zero. That means that this current is zero. Let's go around the loop here. Rise in voltage equals the drops. Okay, so the rise in voltage is V test. The drop is going to be zero times R2 and then minus zero. That's the equation over here. V test is equal to zero and I test is just equal to I test. And so we wind up getting a value of zero. Now where is I test going? It's actually going into the op amp, back to the controlled source, back to ground. Remember there's still a controlled source here back to ground. We don't show it. That terminal is still there. Again, we have zero times infinity here, but that's where that current is going to go back through the power supply back to ground. We also found a similar result on page 16 when we had the model with a controlled source and found that when the gain for that particular circuit went to infinity, the output resistance shrunk to zero. We could model our circuit for the non-inverting amplifier with an open circuit on the input. The voltage here is 1 plus R2 over R1 times V sub S, and I've got a zero Thevenin in resistance. What I've got is a voltage-controlled voltage source. So this op amp, which itself is a voltage-controlled voltage source with huge gain, the feedback configuration creates a voltage-controlled voltage source with a very precise gain. Let's take a look at the limitations due to the fact that we have a power supply. Back when we introduced the op amp, we said that the output voltage can swing anywhere between plus and minus the power supplies. Suppose that I have a plus and minus 15 volt power supply, and then I have two resistors, R1 and R2, that are both 1K. Then the output voltage would be 1 plus R2 over R1 times V sub S, and that would be twice V sub S. Now V out is limited to plus or minus 15, and therefore V sub S, since it's going to be multiplied by 2, means that it has to be limited to plus and minus 7.5 volts. And what would happen if we were to make V sub S 10 volts? The output wants to be 1 plus 1K over 1K times 10, that's 20 volts, but this can't exceed 15, so it's going to stop there. 
I call that clipping. There's also no current entering and leaving the op amp because it's still a high resistance. Current in the 1K here is the same as the current in this 1K. I've got the conditions for voltage divider. So if there's 15 volts here, there'll be seven and a half volts here. Now if there's seven and a half volts here and 10 volts here, that means the voltage across here is two and a half volts. In other words, two and a half plus seven and a half is 10. We no longer have the no voltage across the op amp. So if we try to increase the output greater than the power supply, it just simply stops there. And what happens is the voltage across the op amp is no longer zero. Another example of the non-inverting amplifier is a thing called a voltage follower. This is just an op amp with a feedback here between the output and the minus terminal. And I've got no current coming or leaving out of the op amp. That's zero. I do have feedback, so I'll be driving the voltage to a very, very small value. The output voltage here then would be equal to minus zero plus V sub S. So the output equals the input. We call this a voltage follower because the output's following the input. You could also get the same answer by going back to our non-inverting amplifier configuration. Remember I had a resistor here R2 and a resistor back down here R1, where R2 is zero and R1 is infinity. Now zero times infinity is indeterminate, but zero divided by infinity is zero. In other words, a small number divided by a big number in the limit is going to be zero. V out equals V sub S. Now since V out equals V sub S, why can't I just use a short circuit to accomplish the same thing? Well, you can, but the key thing here is that there's no current coming out of this voltage source. Let me show you an example. Suppose I had a crystal microphone, which has a Thevenin resistance around 10,000 ohms. I terminate it into a headphone. Suppose the headphone's resistance is 600 ohms. Let's find the voltage across here if I were to apply a signal here or speak into the microphone. Now let's do the same thing by putting this voltage follower between the input and the output. For circuit A, I've got the conditions for a voltage divider. This current is the same as this current. So voltage here is 600 over 10K plus 600 times V sub S. That turns out to be a very, very small number, 0 0.0566 times V sub S. Typically with a crystal microphone, you can get voltages here on the order of a volt or so. So we get a very, very small output voltage. In that headphone, you probably wouldn't hear anything. Put the buffer in between and see what happens. Now we have a model for a non-inverting amplifier, so let's put it in. Here's my input connected here. Here's my output, and the gain is one plus zero divided by infinity. So the voltage here is multiplied by one. So now the voltage at the output is just simply equal to V1. And since there's no current here, there's no drop across this resistor. This is equal to V sub S. The output equals the input. What's really happening here is my voltage gain is one, but my current gain is really approaching infinity. I have no current coming in here. I have all the current I need coming out of here. Now in a practical op amp, there is a maximum current that you can draw out of it. We'll talk about this in later courses. These are some examples of the non-inverting amplifier using the idea of no voltage and no current.